Hey the berries, welcome to my 11.19 support tier list. Uh, if you're new to this, then we go through the patch notes that are going to be happening in the patch. And then we're going to have a look at a little tier list. Today, we're going to be looking at the tier list slightly differently than usual. Um, I'm going to go a bit more in depth with my choices and uh, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see the magic soon. Um, so 11.19 is the world's patch. So if you do watch competitive League of Legends, then this is the patch that they will be playing on. And uh, usually with a world's patch, there is lots of changes. Just not for supports this time. Uh, there's actually very few changes coming into supports. Uh, there's a couple of bug fixes. And there's a couple of nerfs, but really in terms of support buffs and nerfs, there isn't a whole lot here. Uh, there's a long list of champions here, but uh, so few of them are support is actually really sad to look at. Uh, the two support nerfs are Sona and Soraka. They're nerfing her heal because it removes grievous wounds. So this is to counteract the buff that she received in the previous patch. Overall, not too crazy. I still think Soraka is still pretty strong. Um, but yeah, obviously it's enough. Sona has lost two whole arm points. I know it's crazy. And they have fixed a couple of bugs in her. So her Q was able to see enemies in the brush, even if you didn't have a warden there. And her slow power cord was able to slow people like Olaf in his ulti when he's meant to be unstoppable. Yeah. I don't know how that managed to happen. Spaghetti code, but that, that happened. Champion buffs for support, we are looking at uh, mainly the Seraphine change there. The Seraphine ulti is going down by 20 seconds, so Seraphine gets a little bit of extra power. Honestly, everything else there is just kind of meh for support. There's nothing really there. You can maybe talk about the Gragas maybe slightly, but 10% more AP ratio on his W. Wow. But yeah, honestly... <clears throat> On the whole, I think uh, it's a very, very sad patch uh, for support. So I was expecting more changes. I was kind of hyped up about the world's patch, you know, it being a bit more exciting. Um, but no, 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 no. So I thought we'd do something a little bit more fun in terms of looking at the tiers for 11.19. If, uh, if Riot aren't going to spice things up, then I can spice up my tier list at least. We are going to be looking at uh, support champions uh, in a tier list, and I'm going to drop a few a uh, few champions in, and then kind of talk about it. Uh, so at the top we have S plus S plus is super special OP, and at the bottom we got D um, D for dunce, I guess. Like really bad. Do not play play it if you're toxic, I guess, in your solo queue games. Uh, we've got Alistair here. Alistair is, uh, you know, he's not too complicated to learn. After a couple of games, you're going to learn his combo. Um, he is an okay champion at engaging, good at roaming, but if you're in low ELO, I wouldn't really recommend. But I think he he's a, he's a B. He's a B. He's a cow, but he's a B. Anivia. Do not play. Just don't play. Don't, don't play her. Ash as well. Like, I don't even know why those are even options there. Do not play these champions unless you really want to int or you watch some edgy YouTuber telling you that, wow, Ash support's amazing because you can press W a few times in lane and uh, then you're utterly useless and then you can only press your ulti. Very cool. Just like your AD carry probably is anyway. We've got Bard. Bard generally does well in high ELO. If you're in low ELO, like, you know, plat minus, super low ELO. Uh, then something like in tier C or D. Um, I think, you know, he's better than the Ash and the Anivia. Um, most people probably won't be able to even play him compared to like even the Alistair. So I'm actually going to put him in C. If you're in high ELO, then maybe he can go up to a B or an A. He's just me, me. Blitzcrank, the number one hooker uh, that terrorizes Soda Q and their mothers. We'll put Blitzcrank solidly in S, actually. I think he's actually been doing pretty well, especially with all the enchanters been taken recently. Um, lots of shields still in the game. His ulti does remove shields. Yeah, I think he's doing pretty, pretty well. Brand looking hot. Um, yeah, S plus, super good at uh, stomping solo queue lobbies. 
particularly if you are in like plat minus. If you are in high elo, he does tend to fall off a little bit, but generally a pretty solid pick if you want to solo carry your games and if you consider all of your AD carries to be utter garbage. Brom. Brom has actually been quite a fun pick actually recently. I'm going to put him in tier B alongside the Alistair. Um, he's kind of like the tank enchanter, um, if that makes any sense. He protect. He can, he can, he can engage. He can engage. Um, but uh, you would kind of only really want to play him with someone kind of aggressive that can link up with his passive with the, like the Lucian. Um, otherwise, you could play him in a more defensive style and use your wall to block off like big ulties. Galio. Now, Galio is a favorite among some people, but they are completely stupid. Tier D. Uh, Gragas, uh, anti tank engage. He does pretty okay. He did get a buff this patch. Um, but let's put him in C. I think he's good at the anti engaging, like uh, Leona or even an Alistair. He can interrupt the Alistair combo. But he's not played that often and for a good reason because he's just kind of meh. Uh, Jenna, not as strong as some of the other enchanters. I think she's still okay. I'm going to put her in B. I think she's okay. She's just okay. Uh, once again, another anti engage uh, support, but nothing too crazy. Karma, I'm going to put an A tier. I think her harassment in lane is pretty nice. She does okay in the mid game now compared to what she did before. Her scaling is okay. Nothing too crazy, but just generally okay. Leona, one of the easiest tanks to play in the entire game. Very, very strong. Very tanky. Very, you know, if you miss your ulti, it's back up again in one minute. It's very uh, generous in that regard. Yeah, pretty good. Lulu, um, if you're in high yellow, Lulu's really good because you can trust your AD carries, but as you all know, we can't trust AD carries, so she goes into a kind of like A, B section. Um, let's put her in A. I think she's better than Janna and Braum, but I don't think she can quite get up into the S tier. She's on an alright pick, um, but you are still kind of relying on your AD carry a little bit, unfortunately. Lux, do not play Enchanter Lux, do not. If you play Enchanter Lux, you're straight into D, alright? If you do that with like Moonstone and stuff, you already are destined to fail. If you want to play AP Lux, then you can actually do pretty well. S tier for that. Uh, get some really nice picks off of some squishy targets. Yeah, pretty nice. Oh, wow, another one. AP Malphite, another bunch of edgy YouTubers that try and make uh, AP Malphite seem actually viable and amazing. But do not be fooled. D, Maokai, D, they look the same as Maokai, and Malphite, they look like brothers, they, they deserve that. All right, Morgana, <clears throat> single root binding, Black Shield can be potentially pretty strong, um, but that's kind of it, but uh, she can link up nicely with a Caitlyn for chain CC combos, uh, B, I think B is fine here. Nami, very strong enchanter, one of the best at the moment, she's doing pretty well in solo queue, S plus tier, very good. Nothing really to say about that. She's just generally like jack of all trades. She's just generally doing pretty well. Nautilus, another engage is doing pretty well in Soda right now. The hook uh, radius is actually really, really generous. Really, really good at uh, engaging. Or even like disengaging since you can hook onto it to the uh, terrain and try and fly away. So yeah, he's doing pretty well. Uh, Nico, no. Pantheon, no. Pike C. I'm gonna put Pike in C. He can kind of be snowbally a little bit with his ulti, um, but yeah, he 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 has potential. Um, but you need to be very good mechanically in roaming with him, which most people in you know silver no, no offense aren't very good at. So yeah, we'll we'll leave Pike at C. Rakan. God, he's annoying. Just like his voice lines and everything about him is annoying. Like if there was an E tier just for that, I'd put him in there. Um, overall though, he's not as bad as the D tier uh, in terms of the mechanics and skills that he provide. If he's paired with a Zaya, he probably goes up like plus one tier. Otherwise, we're just going to treat him as if he's not paired with a Zaya. We could do B tier. Eh, he's alright. Rel, rarely don't play her. D. Uh, Senna, interesting one. Do not play with an AD, but play it with an AP carry. If you play it with an AD, then it's going to be like C tier. If you're playing with like an AP and you're very good with her, then you're looking actually more towards A. Seraphine, actually just received a buff this patch. Um, you know, Sona mains may hate me for saying this, but yeah, she's actually pretty decent right now. I'm going to put her in the A tier, but you will need to land those ultimates. 
set set in stone in D. Uh, Shaco D. Shen D. Right, Sona, we have uh, those nurse coming in, but they're mainly just buck fixes. But actually, I think she's generally pretty good. A little bit risky in some cases, especially against hard engage. But generally, as the game goes on, you should better buff your teammates still. You're still having some reliance like the Lulu. But I think Sona is just stronger than Lulu in terms of overall buff rate. And you're not just relying on your AD carry. You can have a couple of other people to, to be doing like above okay with to be able to like win a game. And she can escalate that quite nicely. Soraka did receive a nerf this patch, but she is still incredibly strong. Unicorns for the win. Uh, Swain, C tier, um, I know there's going to be a few people that are going to get tilted by that, but like Swain has okay burst in lane, he does turn into more like an AP tank later on, just, just, I don't really recommend him, honestly, I don't think he's that, that great really, I don't rely on it. Tom Kench is mainly played top and not support, D, uh, Tarek, D, I mean, yeah, D, uh, Thresh, if you're playing Thresh in silver, you're maybe trolling, but I'm going to give him C just because in high yellow he's still okay, but he's played a lot less and he's been nerfed a lot in previous patches leading up to Worlds. Twitch support, who on earth is playing Twitch support? Velcro's support, uh, it's just... I put him in C. The poking is quite nice, but apart apart from that, I wouldn't recommend. The same with the Seraph is exactly the same thing. Yone. Who put Yone in a support tier list? Uh Yumi, she's pretty good in high ELO, but in like silver-ish ELO, she's not performing too great. Like somewhere like she's got the same kind of reliance as Lulu. Let's put her next to the Lulu. They're basically the same champion, both small and annoying. Zyra, super good at poking and stuff, and very good for like first pick, blind pick, if you're worried about that. And uh, Annie has really nice auto attack range. Her burst combo potential is pretty strong, but no, just don't, just don't do it. Well, hopefully that kind of fun tier list spiced up your day a little bit. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, that was your 11.19 world support tier list wrapped up in a nutshell next time we'll probably go back to the previous style but i thought i'd do a little bit something a bit more fun this time considering the patches were pretty sad so yeah don't forget to stay very awesome and i'll see you soon for more more league more smite more age of empires more other stuff uh gameplay videos and yeah see you see you tomorrow for more content Bye bye